Thank you, Julian, and good morning to everyone, and thank you for joining to our webinar today. My name is Xavier Rivas, and I'm an Applications Engineer for the MPS Automotive team based in Barcelona. Today, I'll be presenting this webinar about designing cooler running multi-channel dynamic lights. In this webinar, we will review the most important challenges during the design of a matrix LED system, emphasizing the selection of the LED driver. We will review some of the challenges that must be faced during the design of these kind of systems, and we will also see how them can be solved by selecting the appropriate LED driver. So the agenda for today will be the following. First, we will review the basics of automotive lighting systems for those people that is not familiar with the topic. Then we will focus on the dynamic matrix LED systems and we will explain what are and which are the benefits of them. Then, once the introduction is covered, we will enter into the design part of the webinar by comparing the two major topologies that are used when designing the automotive exterior lights. In this part, we will see that depending on the application, in order to fulfill the system specifications and optimize the design, we need to use one topology, one topology or another. Finally, we will list the most important challenges that must be faced when designing a dynamic tail lamp and which features must have an LED driver to handle all these issues. In this way, we will also cover two of the most important topics of the automotive sector, that are the thermals and the EMC challenge. In order to finalize the webinar, we will show one of our new designs for a tail lamp and we will review the characteristics of this design and which parts has been selected. So let's start. When talking about automotive lighting applications, we can classify them in three different categories. First, the exterior front lights, such as headlights, high and low beams, and daytime running lights. Then we find the exterior rear lights, that includes tail lamps, stop lights, and other decorative and signaling lights, signaling lights. And finally, the interior lights. If we focus on the exterior lights, that will be the topic of our webinar. We have seen an astonishing evolution over the years with the technology that has been used by the vehicle makers. Firstly, cars were equipped with halogen lamps. This kind of technology has remained over the years and we can find them in actual cars. Thanks to its cost efficiency and its ease of service. As you may know, the vast majority of customers are able to change the bulbs by themselves. However, over the years, the vehicle makers has made an effort to increase the performance of lighting systems, and the cars started to use the high intensity discharge systems, also known as Shannon systems. In order to give you an idea of what they are, you can imagine that uh, the HID systems are similar to the fluorescent lights. This new technology supposes an improvement in the light performance and a reduction of the energy consumption. But this evolution race continued and nowadays, the LED systems are becoming the dominant technology due to a long list of benefits, of benefits that offers. Firstly, its improved efficiency and its long life span makes them to be very attractive for using them into this kind of applications. We don't want to change the, the bulbs every two years. Apart, it's also it also has a light emitting characteristics that allows the manufacturers to reduce the number of external components to reflect and redirect their lights. So we can achieve uh, compact, compact systems. And even more, if, what, if we add this feature with the fact that uh, the LED diode are small, then we can build complex systems that introduces lots of features never seen before in automotive lighting. An example of these new products that can be designed with LED systems are the dynamic LED matrix systems. This product substitutes the light source of automotive lighting systems from a single and old light bulb with a matrix of numerous, of numerous LEDs that can be controlled independently by an LED driver, by a single LED driver or, or multiple LED drivers. Apart from the high controllability that this topology offers, as we can control each LED independently, the efficiency is reduced, and therefore some of the thermal issues are also solved. As it has been said, each LED of this matrix is controlled independently in order to create innovative and fascinating lights. 
light designs that improves diverse visibility, adjusting the light beam to the environment and its conditions. In this first image that we can see on the left, we can see an application example of this kind of products. The system can, complex, can completely deactivate a portion of the LED matrix to avoid dazzling other drivers while still maintaining the area for LED. It means that the driver will have better road visibility while driving into dark as the hike beam is active. But the other users can still drive in, safety, in a safety way because the hike beam will not dazzle them. If we focus on the rear light concept, uh, on the rear lights, the concept is completely different. These lighting systems are commonly used for signaling, and it's like an open territory that manufacturers can explore with new designs. It's for, it's for that reason that in many times, the vehicle makers use these matrices to create unique designs as a kind of uh, a signature for each car model. The trend is to use the, these LED matrices as a new communication channel with other drivers and road users to inform about, for example, the weather conditions or the, or the road conditions. Or in case, for example, in the electrical vehicles, inform about the state of the battery. In conclusion, with the matrix, it's possible to create an outstanding number of light designs that can be used to inform about the road or vehicle conditions, or even more to create a unique and distinctive, and distinctive, distinctive light designs for luxury cars, for example. As it has been seen, the applications of front and rear, or, and rear lights are different, and the topology that is recommended to use in both cases too. In this case, the front lights, uh, we, with the front lights, we require to have a high illumination. Moreover, the current supply to each LED must be the same to ensure the uniform color and brightness of, of light. It's for that reason that the recommended topology is to place the LEDs in series, as we can see in this diagram. Uh, because in this, in this way, the required, uh, the required current will be less than if we put the LEDs in parallel, for example, uh, and the current that pass over all LEDs will be the same. Uh, moreover, we, in order to control each LED independently, we can add power switches between each LED in order to switch circuit them when must be switched off. And uh, if we focus on this diagram, we can see that uh, the current will be less, the, the, the needed current to drive all these LEDs will be less because the current is shared by all LEDs, but the voltage will be high because we need the enough voltage level to power all the LEDs. It's for that reason that in this kind of topologies, we need to add a boost LED driver in order to step up the, the voltage coming from the car battery. So in this kind of topologies, as we can see in the diagram, we, can, we have to include a reverse battery protection in order to protect the, our system about any battery conditions. Then we also use a boost LED driver and the matrix dimmer that will control its LED independently by these integrated power MOSFETs. In the case of rear lights, what is demanded is high controllability of each LED and the required brightness is not an issue. It's for that reason that the recommended, the recommendation is to use a back converter to step down the battery voltage to a suitable value to fit uh, strings of one, two, or three LEDs and place all these LEDs in parallel. Then with this multi-channel line linear uh, LED driver, we can control each string without issues and all LEDs will placed in parallel. Moreover, this topo so in this case, we will require high, higher current because the current is not shared by all the LEDs, but the voltage will be low. Apart from this, this topology is also suitable when it's required to design these new light designs that extends along all the rear side of the car. In this case, we can separate the rear light in a small lighting modules and connect them more or less as a Lego pieces. So uh, once we have defined like the topology that we have to use depending on the application, the next step is to see what, what challenges 
must be faced when designing the system. In this case, in this webinar, we will focus on the tail lamp multi-channel dynamic systems. So we will use this kind of topology. And we will see which are the challenges with this kind of topology with these kind of topologies. So let's start reviewing which difficulties have we have to face during the design. Firstly, there is the problem of the size. We have must we must have in mind that these complex systems that many times are built with many PCBs must fit inside the tail lamp case. So the space we have is limited. Moreover, if we have in mind that we must fit inside the case, apart from the LED matrices and all the required external circuits and PCBs, the optical system, we can imagine that there must be an incredible task to try to minimize the size, the size of, the, of all these PCBs, as the optical systems has like the standardized size. By this way, it's required to decrease as much as possible the number of components that must be placed in these PCBs, and then we can reduce the, the size of these PCBs. But uh, it seems to be a trade-off between the number of features that we can we want for our system and the number on the number of external circuitries that will be required. We will see later that it's not that we can solve this problem. In second place, as it has been mentioned in previous slides, we can see a lot of vehicles with these white lighting designs that covers the rear the rear side of the car, as we can see in this image. They used to split the system, these, these systems in small light modules that are connected between them. And if we want to connect these lots, lots of PCBs between them, or these like uh, PCBs that contains like small LED matrices, we want to avoid uh, this large and complex pack of wires that will increase the system cost and will make uh, the reparation tasks trickier and more complex. So we need to find like the solution in order to avoid these large uh, wires and to connect every uh, all the PCBs. In the third place, brightness is also an important parameter that must be taken into account during the design of this kind of system. It's vital to have sufficient current per channel and also a limited string to string difference between the channels. If it not happens, we will obtain non-uniform and low light designs. So we need to ensure that all LEDs has the same driving current or almost the same or almost the same. Apart from this, as we want to create fancy light designs, we would also need to be able to tune this the emitted light of, of, of the LEDs by applying some dimming techniques. And in this way, it would be needed to get LED driver with analog or PWM dimming. Uh, and this the kind of dimming methods should have high resolution in order because bet a better resolution results in a better light design because we will have more flexibility. In fourth place, the diagnostics is an important topic for complex systems. When having a large number of LEDs placed in a matrix topology, it could be difficult to monitor all LEDs and sense that all the parts are working correctly. If one LED is malfunctioning, the other parts of the system can be affected and the lifetime of the rear light can be affected too. It's for that reason that during the design, it's important to face the safety point of view in order to monitor overcurrents or over temperatures, for example. Moreover, uh, the design must also be done having in mind how to communicate these malfunctions to external controller devices in order to manage all these overall system safety. In last place, um, regarding the safety, as we're talking about lighting applications for automotive sector, the design should be done in order to get the required ACL grade. In cases of lighting, it's ACLB. So the design must be qualified with ACLB um, great. Lastly, the LED matrix should have a robust management to quickly and precisely adapt the light designs while driving. Doing so requires fast and reliable communication between the external controller and the LED drivers. Moreover, in many cases, the controller board 
and the LED board are not close to one another, so the communication can be corrupt due to external noise. This means that the protocol is, in these scenarios, must be immune to noise. Having seen all these challenges, now uh, we will list what features should have the appropriate LED driver to get an optimized design, uh, having in mind that we, we need to solve the PCB size, the scalability, the brightness, the protection, and the communication challenges. It's important to say also that depending on the application, there is some of these features that will not be required, or the solution can be found by adding external circuitry or in other, on other ways. However, the message of this webinar is that all these problems that have been presented can be handled with a single device. In this case, by selecting the appropriate LED driver, if this LED driver contains the features that will be list listed now. And by following our recommendations, the designs will be optimized. Firstly, regarding the PCB size and scalability, we will need small LED drivers that can manage several LEDs. In this case, it's required to get what it's called the ease of scalability. This means that the LED driver must support high number of channels. We can find nowadays some LED drivers that commonly uh, supports around 16 channels per LED driver. In other words, the LED driver must be able to drive multiple, multiple LEDs to reduce the number of components placed in a PCB. The higher number of channels means that the number the, the smaller the, the lower number of LED drivers that must be placed in a in a PCB. Moreover, in order to be able to create these larger systems, the LED driver must support must support a high number of programmable device addresses. If we place in a sing, in a PCB uh, different LED drivers, we want to communicate to each LED driver independently. So we need to assign a different programmable address to each LED driver. If we have a short list of, of possible addresses, we will have, uh, we, we couldn't put, uh, we, we couldn't put this kind of, uh, all, all this number of LED drivers in, in our system. Apart from this, it's also recommended to be able to set the device address with external resistors. So a pin programmable device address. This will be useful in case we want fixed and robust designs. It's obvious that this will add external components to our design, but in best majority of cases, this feature only adds two resistors to the design. Finally, in order to solve the scalability problem, the LED driver must pack all the required information in the minimum, in the minimum number of pins. So we, we want to synthesize all this information that must be shared between LED drivers and the system in the minimum number of pins. This means that having a single input and output pin for daisy chaining is preferred. This will avoid this large and complex set of wires that to connect different PCBs. Regarding the brightness challenge, it's uh, the brightness challenge, it's important to select an LED driver capable of supplying a class leading brightness. This means that we need to select the, the part having, having in mind which is the current that can drive per channel. In this case, depending on the application and the specifications of the system, the needed driving current can change. Higher current means higher brightness. However, we also have to take a look into the accuracy per channel. This means that if we want a uniform emitted light, the, different, the difference of current per channel must be as low as possible. In other words, the channel-to-channel -channel accuracy must be as high as possible. And this, these are some features that must be taken in, into account when selecting the LED driver for tail lamps. Other important aspect regarding the brightness challenge are the, as we have mentioned before, is the dimming possibilities, possibilities of the LED driver. So as we have said, in order to get fancy designs, the dimming resolution that most commonly is given in bits must be as, as high as possible. Or the other important decisions that must be that must be selected is the dimming options. As we have mentioned, there are two main, main options that are the analog dimming, where the LED light output is changed by simply adjusting the DC current in the string, or the PWM dimming, where we can achieve the same effect by varying the duty cycle of a constant current in the string. 
what it's important to mention in 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 this in this point is that uh, the PWM dimming is preferred over the analog dimming because the accuracy of the fields is much better. However, if we focus on the automotive option on automotive sector, the PWM dimming may cause current variation that leads to some EMC issues. Uh, this topic will be seen in next slide. But uh, when selecting this LED driver, we must take care about the dimming options and its resolution to fulfill the, the specifications of the tail lamp system that wants to be designed. Regarding the protection issue, we must select LED drivers with uh, safety-oriented features. So this means that it's required to select a part with a protection suit that includes thermal warnings, LED open and short falls, or pin open and short falls. By this way, the design would be able to detect failures around the entire matrix. And moreover, in order to inform about these malfunctions to the controller part of the circuit, that in some cases is where decisions um, must be taken, it's also required to select an LED driver that contains kind of a fail-safe pin and fold registers into the register map to report all these diagnostics to, for example, uh, an MCU. Regarding the functional safety, the LED driver is not needed to have an ASIL grade, but the entire system must be graded with the ASIL B qualification. So we must have in mind this during the design to choose this LED driver and designing the, the entire system. Finally, regarding the communication issues, as it has been mentioned in as, as it has been mentioned, it's required to have a fast communication protocol in Moon to Noise. In this case, it's recommended to select LED drivers with differential interface, for example, CAN interface. However, depending on the application, in case, for example, the LED driver is near the controller, and to simplify the communication, we can also use LED drivers with WART, or there exists other options without communication interfaces. In this last case, <coughs> uh, we lose flexibility as the lighting sequences are stored inside the LED driver and the memory of these parts is limited. Moreover, in order to avoid corrupted messages, it's also a good choice to select LED drivers with communication protocols that support some redundancy methods such as CRC, for example. So apart from these challenges and these solutions, as we are talking about automotive lighting systems, there are two one of there are two major challenges that must be faced so that is that is the thermal issues and the emc issues in thermal case there are different options to solve the issues apart from designing the pcb accordingly from the led driver point of view we can implement dimming techniques to decrease the driving current and therefore reduce the power consumption and the heat dissipation but other options that has be that has a better response is the one that we can find in the MPQ 7225. That is one of the newest LED drivers from MPS. That is the adaptive feedback control. This kind of method adjusts the DC-DC converter's output voltage based on the headroom value. This means that the voltage in each channel is sensed, and depending on the on this sense voltage, the supply voltage of LEDs is changed by changing the feedback, the feedback pin of the pre-regulator. So in, in this image, we can understand better all these voltage, all the, all the voltages are sensed in the, in the, in its channel. And then if, and then if any LED output falls below 0 0.3 volts, the back converter's output voltage increases. And if the voltage exceeds 0 0.4 volts, then the pre-regulator's output voltage decreases. With this kind of mechanisms, the, the system efficiency will be optimized and the thermal issues solved. It's important to mention that these 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 volts uh, values can be changed by, by, by in this re register map. With this kind of mechanism, we can also change the system behavior and optimize it depending on the external conditions. So let's explain it better. LEDs forward voltage decreases with temperature, as we can see in this diagram on the left. 
So the cadmium voltage at higher temperatures increases, which reduces the system's efficiency and makes the thermals worse. So when the uh, AFC function is enabled, the pre-regulator's output voltage drops at higher temperatures to optimize efficiency and the overall system's behavior. So by using this kind of mechanisms that we can see in the MPQ7225, the designer can improve thermals in lighting designs. So in this case, we, we have found this, these two images where we can see that with, uh, without the, these mechanisms, we have uh, 88 degrees of temperature. And with EF, AFC ima, uh, mechanism, we, the temperature is decreased and we have 54 degrees. Finally, for the automotive sector, it's also important to make designs according to the EMC constraints. Because of this, it's recommended to select LED drivers that provide options to reduce EMIs. As it has been mentioned, we can find EMC issues when PWM dimming is working because we have these like variations of, of current. It's for that reason that the selected LED driver is recommended to implement some features to be able to configure the slew rate of these current pulses or its phase shift. In this image, we can see how this spike that is caused by the as a, another channel is removed when we change and we decrease the slew rate of the current peaks, of the current variations. Other options passes to be able to configure the frequency of this dimming in order to place the EMC peaks into frequency bands without EMC limits. Or another option is to select an EIC, an, an IC that implements a sped spectrum of the, of the internal clock. When this was implemented in the design, the EMI, EMI noise around the internal clock frequency and the harmonics was reduced. So having seen all these challenges and which solutions are required to solve them, we have selected this MPQ7225 and we have designed it our, our tail lamp board. In this case, we have used a back regulator from, from MPS that changed, uh, that steps down the car battery voltage to 3.5 volts. This voltage can be changed depending on how many LEDs has been selected per, per channel. In our case, we have used 84 LEDs that all, all are controlled individually, so each channel has one LED, has one LED, and in the PCB we have uh, we have uh, placed in thirty in thirty columns and three rows. Uh, these LEDs, as as the our MPQ seventy to twenty five uh, can manage sixteen channels, we have used six 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 LED drivers in order to control each LED independently. So finally, we have built a PCB that measures 80, 80 millimeters per 110 millimeters, and it's two layers PCB. And as it can be seen by selecting this LED driver, as an example of an LED driver that compacts uh, too many features in, inside it, we have a small number of external components. So the conclusion, is that uh, in order to, to design the tail lamp, a dynamic tail lamp, we must face uh, some many challenges, but by selecting an LED driver that has great scalability, a class leading brightness, a safety oriented design, robust communication interfaces, and some techniques for reducing the EMIs and some mechanism to increase the thermal performance of the device, we can uh, face all these challenges and create optimized designs for, for these dynamic tail lamps. And we have also found that the MPQ7225 is one of the best options to design multi-channel dynamic automotive lights. So now the webinar is finished. And if you have any question, I will please to answer it. Thanks, Xavi. Uh, great presentation. I want to remind everyone that you can mouse over the bottom of the, your Zoom webinar interface and then you can type in any question you might have. As we are waiting for more questions to come in, I want to remind you that we are recording this session and we will send it over via email next week.
With this link, you can watch today's webinar on demand, and we will also send you a link to the presentation itself. Please also check our MPS website and the webinar schedule to see additional sessions. So let's get started uh, with the first uh, question. It is uh, one second. Where should we place the controller board when designing a tray lamp? Well, this it's it's an open topic because it depends on the tail lamp design and the application. In some in some cases, the system only packs one controller board to manage the the both tail lamps. And this controller board is placed inside one of the both tail lamp cases. But in other cases, uh, it doesn't care where to place because if we have uh, while they uh, it doesn't care because if we if we manage the MC issues and thermals and the protocol to communicate to which tail lamp is is immune to noise, we can place where we have when where we have in space. So it depends mainly on the design of uh, of its tail lamp. So it doesn't care. Okay, thanks a lot. Next question would be, will a fan solve thermal issues? Well, it's also a good option in order to solve thermal issues, but fans uh, occupy a big space and uh, it must be added into our design in order to control the, the, the thermals. But having this kind of alternative mechanism like the adaptive feedback control and uh, an optimized uh, PCB design and layout, uh, it's also good options. And we are acting inside the PCB and we don't not require this like external components, but it's recommended to also add the, the fans into our design. Okay, thanks a lot. So do we have any other question? We will pause here now for a little bit and give you the chance to type them in. Feel free about anything that you had a question on as we would love to have an engaged and fruitful discussion. So let's see. So there's one other question. It is, uh, what about laser technology for lighting applications? Yes, it's this is one of the newest uh, technologies that has been seen for uh, exterior light designs. And it has been found that as the laser diodes are, are smaller than the LED diodes, we have we can get much smaller and efficient designs. Moreover, the, the brightness of these kind of diodes are better than the LEDs. So we can achieve a longest range, lo longest visibility range. And this will improve driver's visibility and uh, in consequently, we will get more road traffic safety. However, this is like this newest technology and uh, still now that it's high cost technology. But so we, we don't know which will be the evolution in, in, this, in this kind of technologies, but uh, it's like a promising technology. And we can see them in, I think that we have, we still have cars now we can see some cars with this kind of technologies. But it's like uh, for future. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Xavi. Uh, so we have more questions coming in. The next one would be, do we have any reference design which you can share? We currently don't have uh, any reference design in, in our website, but we are working on, on the documentation. So we will upload this, this reference design to our website in, in the future. Okay, thanks a lot. Next one is, uh, what is the communication protocol? Can you are RT or I2C? Can, can, can you repeat the question? What is the communication protocol? Can you are RT or I2C? Uh, if you mean in this kind of LED drivers in the MPQ72 to 25, uh, it's like a differential interface that uh, supports CAN. So it's kind of 
it's called uh, 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 Ward over CAN. So it's kind of CAN, it's a Ward protocol, but with a differential, with but in differential interface. But uh, there are also some LED drivers from MPS that are the same version of this IC, but uh, are with, uh, but supports Ward and other of these kind of LED drivers are without interface and store the, the sequences in, inside the LED driver. Okay, thanks a lot, Xavi. Uh, next question is, uh, do you already have the development boards for the MPQ7225 available? If not, when will they be available? I think that we have currently these evaluation boards. Uh, I think that they are in our website. So yes, you. I think that you can ask these evaluation boards from our website. If not, it will be uploaded in future, but uh, I think that you can ask for these boards now. Okay, thanks a lot. Next one is, do we have the complete control of how many current goes through each LED branch? Because there will never be two exact LEDs. Yes, in this case of, in the, in this, uh, according to this question, uh, there are some LED drivers like this one, the MPQ72225, that integrates a current sense. So it's like a kind of shunt that it's placed inside the, the LED driver to sense the, the current. So yes, uh, the, we can sense how, how many current goes through each LED. But, and in this case, as the LEDs are in parallel, uh, each channel will sense this, this current. And if we place more than one LED in, in each channel, the, the current will be the same. So yes, in this case, with the, the, with this LED driver, we can sense the, the current that goes to each LED. And in this case, the and this is used in order to increase the accuracy, the string to string accuracy. And in this case, the, the LED driver, this LED driver has a 5% accuracy. Okay, thanks a lot. So next one, uh, next question is, could be integrated in any CAN bus domain or must be created a specific bus domain just for this driver? For this driver, the, 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 like the electrical layer of the protocol, it's, a, it's, it's like CAN. So we need to use like a CAN transceiver, for example, in order to pass the, in order to communicate with this, with this kind of LED driver. But the, like the upper layers, so the the data, the data length and the the data bytes are a bit different so it would it would be needed to place in another bus or manage that when we are directing we are communicating with when we are communicating with the LED driver to change like the the communicate the 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 like the the bytes that we sent Okay, thanks, Xavi. So there's one other question. It is, uh, what is the maximum voltage for the LEDs that can be used? Is it possible to have more than one LED in series? Yes. In this case, the MPQ7225 supports up to uh, 18, 18 volts, and we can place more than one LED in a, in a single channel. And the the register map will change, but yes, we can place more than one LED per channel and it will be supported with this LED driver. Okay, thanks a lot, Xavi. So uh, thank you very much for all the questions. So far, I'm not seeing any further questions. Last chance now, so if you have any question, please type, uh, start typing in them now. So next one is, uh, is there any LED driver controlled fully by Khan, by Ken? I think that, yes, there will be in the market LED drivers that can be controlled by Khan. So the protocol, the entire protocol, but I'm not, I don't know which are these, these LED drivers, but yes, I, I'm sure that there will be in the market 
so many drivers that can be controlled with CAN. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, next one is, does the MPQ7225 have a fault pin that can be triggered via a H HW-based fault time fault line? Yes, yes. In this case, the MPQ7225 has a fault safe pin, and if any malfunction is detected, this fault safe pin will will trigger, will be triggered. So we can communicate these faults to an external MCU or a controller port. Okay, thanks a lot. So we will give you a few more seconds to type in any question you might have. So please uh, start typing your questions now. If you do not have any further questions, uh, we will uh, finish the webinar now. So at the moment, I'm not seeing any further questions. So as I told before, the presentation and the link to the presentation will be sent uh, via email within the next couple of days. So you can review, review the presentation again. And uh, with that, I want to thank you for your time and remind you to look for future webinars that we are producing. Hopefully we will see you back there, here again in the near future. Thanks everyone and I wish you a great day. Bye everyone.